morning, folks. So, you, you that have been watching for some time, you probably know that I am a big fan of the Old West and the, you know, all the guns and the saddles and all the gear they had back then. And I uh, wanted to show off a couple of my guns here. This one here is an 1874 Sharps Buffalo Rifle. It's a reproduction made by C Sharps Arms in Big Timber, Montana. It fires a 520 grain 4570 bullet that I, I hand cast and hand load with black powder. It's going roughly 1200 feet a second. This one here, this is an original Remington rolling block. It's got a saddle ring on it. It started out as a uh, Egyptian, 43 Egyptian rifle. I had it reamed out, re uh, relined the barrel did, rechambered for a 5070 because the chamber was messed up. You couldn't, once you shot it, you couldn't eject them again. And that's what these look like. It's a it's a 50 caliber 5070 black powder round. Now the the 4570 and the 5070 were both uh, government rounds. The the United States government made both of these. They're called 4570 government and 5070 government. Both of them are going about 1,200 feet a second, maybe a little more, a little less. The 4570 I have loaded with a 520 grain bullet. The 5070 I have loaded with a 450 grain bullet. So it's a little bit lighter, but it's bigger around. Uh, <laughs> so you're probably wondering by now, okay, so why am I telling you this stuff? Last night... I ended up with a terrible leg cramp about 3 o'clock in the morning. And that runs in my family. I've had them all my life, and it, it's absolute misery. I wake up in the middle of the night screaming in pain, and I can't do anything about it. Well, last night, I woke up before it got terrible bad, and I was able to hobble my way out of bed and down the hall and try to find some of my leg cramp stuff. <laughs> well, you know, we're, we're in this new house, the second night is all, and it, nothing's put away. I couldn't find anything. Potassium, I call it chalk, the antacid tablets. I don't know what they are, but they taste like chalk. That's what I call it. Calcium, calcium tablets or something. I don't know. Anyway, the Potassium, chalk, and uh, pickle juice, actually, vinegar, will help get rid of those. So I hobbled down into the bathroom trying to find any of that stuff. I couldn't find any of that stuff. And so I ended up, a lot of times you get leg cramps because you're dehydrated, and I guzzled a whole bunch of water, and that kind of seemed to help. They eventually went away, but... While I was up screaming in misery, Cindy said that she heard some shooting. Like I say, it's roughly three in the morning. And uh, there's no reason anybody should be out there shooting. Well, there's a party over here. And I don't know, you can't really say it was them. I mean, it, it seemed a little suspicious. It's kind of a party of hunters from the looks of their signs. And... Uh, that was the direction it came from, but my neighbor stopped by and he asked if we'd heard anybody shooting last night because he had a bullet sticking out of his windshield. The, the bullet, the lead part, you know, when people talk about a bullet, most of the time they, they think that's the bullet. That is a cartridge. That's not the bullet. The bullet is just this little itty bitty piece on the end, the chunk of lead that goes flying through the air and hits you. The rest of this stays in the gun. 
That's a cartridge. The bullet is what he found stuck in his windshield. <laughs> and it was aimed right toward that party. You can't really say they did it, you know. I mean, it looks really bad for them, looks suspicious, but it could have been somebody off the highway. It could have been further over. And that's kind of why I'm dragging these guns out and talking about these two cartridges. At 1,200 feet, 1,300 feet sometimes per, per second, these bullets, 5070 and 4570, for their time, they were kind of the magnums. They were, they were buffalo hunting cartridges. Actually, they started out as uh, government government rounds for the military, both of them. But, you know, the government, if you look at the history books, the buffalo hunting slaughter, they call it, was all about greed. They wanted the hides, they wanted the tongues, and that was all they took a lot of the time, left the whole carcass. Well, what they don't actually tell you in there, you have to dig a little deeper to find out that our United States government wanted to wipe out the American Indians food supply. They wanted to do away for the buffalo. And so a lot of these, both of these two rounds were government issue and they were donated to the buffalo hunters to help get rid of the, the Indians food supply and force the Indians onto the reservation. Now, you know, like I say, they, they tell you it's all about greed. All they took was the hide or the tongue a lot of the time and very little of the meat. But what they also don't tell you, you have to, like I said, dig a little bit deeper. The railroad. The railroad did not like the buffalo. They would run over the buffalo and it would derail the trains at times. That's why the front of those steam trains have that little V-shaped thing in the front of the front of the train. It looks almost like a plow. That was for, <laughs> if they hit buffalo, it was to deflect them off of the track so it didn't derail the train. The, the railroad was not at all fond of the buffalo. They wanted them gone. So did the government. So, a lot of the, the government supplied the trains with ammo, both 4570 and 5070, to shoot buffalo off of the train as it was moving. That was a big sport. People would line up on, a, on the windows and things, and they would shoot buffalo. They had no intention of ever going up to them and taking the tongue, taking the hide, taking anything. It was, it really was a slaughter. They were trying to get rid of them. So, anyway, so why am I talking about all this and the neighbors? The, <laughs> my, my neighbor that found that bullet in his windshield. You know, these were not high power. They were high power at the time, but they were not ever considered to be long range rifles. The stuff we have today majority of your hunting rifles, deer hunting rifles, are going 2,500 feet per second and up. So a lot of them make 3,000. Some of them come close to 4,000. Some of them even go past 4,000 feet a second. These are only 1,200 feet a second. Uh, they go a long ways, a really long ways. There was a fella, if you are... I got me a whiskey, by the way. There was a fella, if you were into Old West history, you might have heard of him. If you were into buffalo hunting history or black powder cartridge history, you might have heard of him. Name was Billy Dixon. Now, Billy Dixon was a buffalo hunter. And he got in a battle with the Indians uh, him and a bunch of other buffalo hunters at a place called Adobe Walls. And Billy shot an Indian off of his horse 
at a full mile away or just under there you know back then it was pretty hard to guess the range but they're they're saying it was very close to if not one full mile away with basically a 5090 this one's a 5070 it's the same cartridge but the 5090 is a little bit longer i'm thinking like a three-eighths of an inch longer i'm not 100 percent sure how much uh dave morelli he has a 5090 but they were saying, well, that's, that's too far. A black powder cartridge could never throw a bullet that far. That is uh, a mile is 1,760 yards. There's no way black powder going 1,200 feet a second could, could have done that. Well, when you think about it, a fella sitting on a horse, the horse to his withers, the shoulder blades where the saddle is, is probably five foot tall, maybe just a little bit more. And then from your from your butt, basically, the top of your head, you're another four foot or maybe, maybe three, three and a half, something like that. So you're talking a target that is probably eight, nine feet tall. It doesn't matter back then if you hit the guy or you hit the horse, you still put him on the on foot or you get him. Well, he shot the Indian off the horse at, at like I said, 1,760 yards. Well, they say that's not possible. So this article I got here talks about that, and they went to a, a government... Uh, I don't know what you'd call it, a government shooting range, basically, in Yuma, Arizona. And they have a, a gun cradle converted from a Russian T-72 tank. Uh, and they have a... It, it is a, a radar tracking device that is able to track a single bullet through the air. So... They took a model 1874 Sharps rifle, it's this one, in a 5090, they think that's what Billy probably had, and they, they elevated it over 35 degrees and fired it off. Well, the scientists that said that it couldn't be done, they would never go that far, they're scratching their heads and muttering, it says it landed 3,600 yards away. Remember, a mile is 1,760 yards. So, it, I mean, it, it definitely went far enough. Uh, they tried it several times, and the, the range was all about the same. So, what all this is getting down to is that guy's window, the bullet in the window. That party's right there. But that doesn't mean that they, they're swearing up and down. Nobody was shooting at that party. They're in, you know, it could have been that that party is maybe a half a mile away. It could have been much, much further away that somebody shot and put that bullet in the window. It looks very bad for them. It's very suspicious. But that don't necessarily mean they, mean they did it. You know, you see on TV, on all the westerns and things, the, the cowboys shooting in the air and hooping and hollering as they're galloping their horse down the street and stuff. Those bullets got to come down someplace. And yeah, you see all the time on the TV or whatever, somebody is trying to signal their buddy. So they stick their gun in the air and they fire it off. That's a bad idea. I mean, aim for the ground. Aim for a, a log or a tree stump or something that's going to stop that bullet. Don't shoot in the air because that thing's going to come down someplace. I think having it come down on you is probably a lot like getting hit by lightning. I mean, chances of it happening are very, very small. But it does happen. Every now and then you hear of somebody that got hit by a stray bullet that was fired into the air. So, a very bad idea. But, anyway, I thought that was kind of interesting. The, the new place we're in, it's kind of a straight line 
to that guy's pickup truck that got hit to that party. <laughs> and he was telling us, you better kind of look around and make sure nothing of yours got hit. And I don't think so. I mean, we were awake because of my dang leg cramp. But I never heard anything. And Cindy said she did hear some shooting, she thought. So, anyhow, it's... It's up in the air, literally. <laughs> Don't fire into the air, folks. It's a bad idea. Anyway, I'm hoping to use one or the other of these for hunting this year. The This one I have shot an awful lot of animals with, the Sharps. I've got bears, I've got mountain lion, I've got deer and elk, and i got a mountain goat, i got a mountain lion... Uh, boy, I don't know, pretty much you name it, I've got it other than a moose or a wolf. Those two are very tough to come by. This one here, the rolling block, I haven't got anything with that. I'd really like to shoot a deer with it this year. The reason I don't hunt with them much anymore is because of those wolves. The... Like I say, these things are going slow. They they get their power from the bullet weight. Most of your most of your thirty caliber bullets are between hundred and a quarter to a hundred and eighty grains. They they get bigger, you know. There's there's some that are two hundred grains and things. But that's about the mo max of it. Uh, majority are probably one fifty, one sixty, one seventy on average uh, you know you, you got a whole slew of other bullets and other calibers but the the 4570 like I say it's a 520 grain bullet the 5070 is 450 grains and I mean quite a little bit of difference the, the way they get their power even though they're not moving very fast is they're heavy that momentum carries a long ways and it hits hard uh, if you were able to shoot a, a ping pong ball and a golf ball at the same time at the same speed even though they're the same size same shape everything's the same the golf ball is going to go a lot farther because it's heavier than that ping pong ball the air resistance slows it down much faster because it doesn't have the momentum behind it and uh, that's kind of the way bullets are too. The bigger and the heavier, there's other factors like 50 caliber. 50 caliber is a half an inch. That's a lot of air pushing against there compared to, say, a 30 caliber or a 7 millimeter, 6, 6.5 millimeter, one of those others. The smaller, smaller diameter, there's less air resistance. And that factors in. But the heavier bullet weight makes up for it. They go a long ways. But if you get a high-powered deer rifle, there, I haven't seen any comparison, but I'd be willing to bet they'd go a lot further than these will. And uh, <laughs> like I say, that, that's not that far away. A quarter mile, half a mile maybe. So it's possible it was those folks, but it ain't 100% for sure. You can't blame them without proof, and they're swearing up and down. Nobody in their camp was shooting. Don't know. Have a great day, folks, and see you tomorrow. Thanks for watching. Hope you like this. These are two of my fa most favorite guns, and I got, I got a pretty good pile of them. See ya.